it is now 730. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first I will welcome everyone who has joined us today. Um, and thank you for being here. And we're so excited to have you. And we will begin introductions. So I am Kelly Garcia. I'm programming assistant in the International Student and Scholar Office. And with us today is Katie Wang. Um, Katie, if you want to introduce yourself. Oh, sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Katie. I'm a rising sophomore at SMU, and I'm planning on majoring in finance and minoring in music industry practices. I'm really excited to talk to you guys about on and off campus housing today. Thank you, Katie. And then we also have Randy Hickman with us with United Real Estate. Randy, if you just want to say hi real quick. Good morning, Randy Hickman, United Real Estate. I'm happy to be here and I really appreciate the opportunity to help. So it's a lot of information, but I can help you narrow it down and just simplify the process and help answer questions about the best places and most popular places to live, basically. Awesome. Thank you, Randy. So first, I wanted to point out that there, for international students, there's a few special considerations, um, including that international students may arrive no earlier than 30 days prior to the program's start date, and you must enter the country using your student visa. So you cannot enter the country on a student visa. So those are, that's just a special note. And in this webinar, we're gonna be covering a few topics, including the on-campus housing options, um, the difference between on-campus and off-campus living, and the difference of cost between the two. And then Randy will cover the process to secure off-campus housing. And of course, we'll do the moving tips at the end. So here on the screen, you see four of the most common housing options on campus. The first and the most common are the commons, which is just another word for the residential buildings. So there are 11 of them across campus, and this is the most popular option for undergraduate students. So if you're planning on living on campus, you will most likely live in a common. Um, I personally lived in Lloyd Commons, which is um, in the Southeast dorms. Um, Katie, did you live in a dorm? Yeah, I lived in VS, which was um, Northwest, yeah. Uh, VS is short for Virginia Snyder. Um, and if you are living on campus, you should get your Commons assignments in an email and information on your Commons. And what's exciting about the commons is they have commons events and there's a real community in the commons. Um, I know Lloyd did some TED talks and there's just a lot of community in the commons. Um, Katie, did you want to add anything about your experience in the commons? Um, overall, it was pretty great. Um, I felt like my commons really tried to uh, make everyone feel welcomed. Um, on their first day. Um, I really enjoy getting to hang out with people in my commons, getting to know people from my commons. And also, I really enjoyed participating in a bunch of commons activities like intramural sports and also Sunday night snacks. It's just a tradition we do at VS where um, every Sunday we go to our first house and just meet up and hang out with people, eat some cookies and me on um, her dogs, which is the best part. <laughs> so your fur is your faculty in residence. It is a typically a professor at SMU who will actually live in the commons um, with the students and it is a great resource um, for the students as well. So another housing option is upper division housing. This is housing typically reserved for upperclassmen or graduate students who opt to stay on campus. And these are just, again, separate houses from the undergraduates. The next house is the service house. This is a house with 28 students 
you must submit an application to join this housing and you are required to do 30 volunteer hours while you live in this house. And from what I've heard, this house has a very strong community and every Sunday night they have dinner together. So if this is something that interests you, you can look into applying to live at the service house. And then as you walk around campus, you'll notice other houses. Um, and these are most likely the fraternity and sorority houses. And to live in these houses, you need to be a member of that organization. So if you join a fraternity or a sorority, you might end up living in a fraternity or sorority house. So the difference between on-campus and off-campus living, um, the big one is off-campus, you are more independent and in some ways have a few more freedoms. But let's go through on-campus living first. The first benefit of living on campus is its close proximity to classes. Classes are within walking distance from you. Um, and so um, the benefit of living in a common is there are study lounges, there are, as me and Katie said earlier, there are community events and activities, and then there is that faculty and residence that we talked about earlier. And then another thing important to note is that alcohol is not prohibited on campus. And then smoking is not allowed indoors either. This includes electronic cigarettes and vaporizers. Um, but you may go outside at 25 feet away from buildings. And also on campus is a resident assistant or RA for short on each floor of the commons who help you with whatever you might need if you have a maintenance issue, if you're locked out of your dorm, it's your main person of contact. Off campus, however, you will have most likely access to a kitchen, a more flexible visitor policy. Um, it can be more cost effective. There's typically more space than in a dorm and overall more independence. Um, although in an on-campus, housing arrangement, there's typically a lease, a one-year lease versus on campus, you just stay for an academic term at a time. So those are important distinctions to make between the two. In terms of cost, the cost of a dorm is highly dependent on the size of the dorm you decide to get, whether it is a single, a double, or a suite style dorm. And also included in your room and board is electricity, water, internet, other utilities, um, maintenance is included, furnishings, your bed, your mattress, desk, dresser, and then an SMU cleaning service. All of those are included in your room and board. Whereas off campus, there are, there's a greater range of prices to choose from in terms of living and utilities are not often included. Also, you must most likely provide your furnishings, such as your mattress, your dresser, couch, kitchenware. And depending on the rental, you may or may not get appliances um, in your apartment beforehand. Another thing that's important to note is you must sign a lease and pay deposits um, before you move on campus, which you don't have to do when you live on campus. So before we get into this slide, um, before I hand it over to Randy, um, I just wanted to say that you are more than welcome to go on your apartment search um, independently, but today we will be connecting you with Randy Hickman from United Real Estate. And Randy has partnered with many SMU students before. Um, so while it's not required, you may choose to utilize Randy's services and that he'll explain more in depth here in a second, um, or another real estate agent. But for now, I'm going to hand it off to Randy. And actually, if you don't mind, hi, um, Randy, sorry to jump in before you start. Um, I'm going to, 
My name is Ashley. I'm at the ISSS office. We will probably run all the way until eight o'clock, but we'll stay on a couple extra minutes after if you all have questions or start putting them in the chat. Um, but Randy, go ahead and take it from here. Thank you. No problem at all. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to help. I really appreciate the opportunity. You can just call me or email me. You can also text me anytime. And the, the apartment listings are customized for each person. So one person's list may look very different from another person's list based on your requirements and like how close you want to be to campus, what is your budget, whether you're looking for a one, two, or a three bedroom floor plan, and what lease term you're looking for and things like that. So uh, once I get the information about what specifically you're looking for in your search parameters, I put together the listing, email it over to you. It's very user friendly. You simply click on the link and the listing comes up on the screen and shows photos, floor plans, um, map links to, that you can click on, as well as just a list of amenities and just lots of general information that will answer a lot of your questions right off the bat. But and then, of course, there will be some things you'll have questions about and I can help fill in the blanks. Basically, I, I noticed on one of the previous screens, there was a mention about how a 12 month lease is required off campus a lot of times. And that's sometimes true. But a lot of the apartment communities actually have flexible lease terms. Um, I just had one student who leased an apartment for just a four month, three or four month lease term. But the thing to know about short term leases is the shorter the lease, the higher the price, basically. So you can do a nine or 10 month lease term at a lot of apartments just for the fall and spring semester. But um, at this point, the nine and 10 month leases tend to cost a little bit more because the apartment communities already have too many leases expiring in May of 2021. So in order for you to get a lease expiring in May of 2021, the, the rental, the monthly rental amount might be a little bit more, um, but sometimes there's not, there's not too much difference between the nine month quote and the 10 month quote and the 12 month quote. Also, if you do a longer lease term, you're more likely to maybe lock in a little bit better rate and also maybe get a move in special or a, con a concession or an incentive or something. So um, there's a few options that are walking distance to campus. Um, there's quite a few options that are located along the SMU Mustang Express shuttle route. And then if you plan to drive to campus, there's lots more options to consider. Basically, some of the apartments require applicants to be over 21, but most of them require applicants to be only over 18. So that's really good to know on the 21 and up. 21 and up options. If you're not 21 yet and you fill out the application, it'll stop you at the, the field where you fill in your date of birth and won't let you continue. So they're kind of strict about that. But um, some of the apartments include washer and dryer. Some of them don't. Um, you can add a washer and dryer rental if you want to. All of the apartments have all the kitchen appliances like a refrigerator, a dishwasher, and a stove or oven. But, but some of them don't have a microwave. And, um, and then none of them include furniture, but if you need um, help connecting with a furniture rental expert, of course, we can do that, um, refer you to someone for that. And um, uh, I think, I know that's a lot, but there's, there's even more information. So just let me know what questions you have. Does that sound okay? Yeah, is that... Um... Kelly, can you go to the next slide? Randy, did you want to go through this or you think, Phil? Did you want me to read it? Because I Just a summary of it. Um, so Any, yeah. Anything that you think would be helpful? No, no problem at all. So basically, um, in order to take an apartment off the market and secure it and protect it that locks in the rate and, and um, holds it in your name you have to fill out an application and pay the deposit and application fee so uh, it, it, that's good to be aware of because if you fill out the application but you don't make, it, you don't make it to the credit card payment the, the apartment might not be protected and uh, the apartments are getting leased really fast right now so an apartment available at one o'clock may easily no longer be available at three o'clock 
And so you have if once you figure out which one you want to leave, you should fill out the application and submit the deposit and fees pretty fast. Um, uh, and then um, try to confirm with the leasing office that they've received your application and your deposit so that you can feel confident that it's being held for you while you pro while they process your application. And you just simply put your social security number on the application. They use that to run your credit report and do a background check. But if you're an international student, they'll um, most likely just have you fill out an international application form uh, and um, uh, I think that's, that's kind of the basics for that screen, really. And then once the application is approved, they'll send the lease to you for a signature, and then you're fully committed to the lease. There's no back out, really. So if you're if you're not sure, it's good to hold off on signing the lease, and some of them will. Um, uh, are requiring the lease to be signed no more than just a few days after the application is approved. And some of them are a little strict about that. Like if you don't sign the lease within a certain number of days, they might put the apartment back on the market. But I haven't seen that happen to anyone. So if you're not sure and you need for them to hang on to the lease for a few days while you confirm your plans and feel confident about signing the lease, then uh, I think a lot of them are willing to uh, they're trying to be flexible during this time of uncertainty basically so just um once you sign though i would just be careful if you're not sure and then um uh, if you use my service you'll just let me know which one you decide to go with i'll really appreciate that so i can submit my paperwork to them my service doesn't cost you anything we're paid by the apartment community so long as you let them know that i'm referring you and uh, they pay my real estate broker from their advertising budget. That's how it's free to the student, basically. So um, I think that's all. Great, thank you, Randy. So some of you might be thinking, well, I'm living on campus and that is okay, but there's gonna come a time where you may decide to go off campus. And so it's great to know this information now um, because there's no time in the semester where SMU says, hey, if you're gonna get ready for off-campus living, the time to do it is now. People just kind of find out from word of mouth and things like that. So you are now one step ahead knowing this information. And I see we have a couple of questions in the chat. So we'll go through those soon, but let's go through moving tips really briefly. If you could go to the next screen, Kelly. And thank you again, Randy. Um, so we're gonna have this recording available for you. Here are some examples of just locations and, and average pricing. These are not fixed prices. They may have changed. They may have special deals. Randy can help you with, with you know, just options in general as well. Uh, we go to the next slide. So moving tips. Some of you may have a roommate and if you do, you know, you wanna coordinate with them about what each person is bringing so you don't have double of items. Um, I have a question about, you know, if I have a roommate pair, but I'm going to be online this semester, will that roommate still be there for me in the spring? That is a question you'll want to direct to housing at smu.edu because we are not sure as the ISS office if they would hold that same roommate spot for you or if they would change it. Um, inspect the room before moving for any damage to walls, floors, furniture. I'll tell you all this. I personally just moved recently and I was previously renting. And while they say your security deposit, which is typically one month's rent, is uh, something that you would have returned, it's not always the case because they may say, well, there's damage for this or cleaning for that where we're going to have to take off this amount to cover it. You want to have proof that you've left it clean, how you received it, anything like that. There'll be a note um, I think your dorm actually also has this if you're on campus where you write down everything you see that may be right, wrong with the room. Hope, I mean, the rooms are given to you in good condition as apartments should be off campus as well, but take note of every little scuff, mark, anything. Paint stains, smudges, smear stains. It doesn't cost you a penny to do that. I just, I write that, you know, I, you go do a, and then when you move out, you can get them to maybe walk through with you and sign off on it with the manager and that's a good idea too. Yes, good good note there. Um, a lot of times when we move somewhere new, we want to do lots of shopping, but um, just take hey, it slow. Mark, how are you? Hello, I don't know who this is, oh. but we're going to keep going. So if you oh, have he, your... He was such a good looking young man. Oh my gosh, <laughs> wow. I think someone wow. took a call. I'm going to go ahead and mute Like them. all your family. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, 
Okay, I have now muted everyone. I'm happy someone's taking a happy call. Um, so don't be shy about asking for student discounts. There's a lot in the area that will offer student discounts. And I can, can you go back to that last one? Um, if you're living off campus, just make sure you're arranging for you, your utilities, internet, power, cable to have connected prior to arrival. Okay, and so I'm gonna go back to some questions. That housing email is in our chat. Some of you have heard about the quarantine um, notice. And so what this means is that if you are coming from, me and go to the, to the last slide, Kelly. If you're coming from overseas, SMU is, uh, um, it, has said that they are expecting those individuals to quarantine for 14 days. Now, um, the details behind that, I we don't have that information. The language is that it is expected. Um, now, to think about students who are on campus, your moving contract says that you are paying for to live here at SMU, and so if you are asked to quarantine, SMU housing will work with you to get you housing accommodations during that time. And I know they're also working on meals for that time. If you are on campus, uh, off campus, the understanding is that um, you would have a space um, off campus on your own where you would be able to practice um, self quarantining. If you have specific questions about this related to on campus, I would suggest you refer back to the housing at SMU.edu email. If you're off campus, feel free to reach out to me, Ashley Kaysen at SMU.edu. Um, we are figuring this out together, but we wanna make sure that you feel safe and you feel comfortable. If you have someone helping you with move-in, again, let us know because those are maybe some of the details that we wanna make sure that you um, have support around figuring out how you would navigate that. And so I know one of the questions that came through on the chat, I believe I have an email from you, but um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna coordinate I'm gonna copy housing on that one with us together. So um, if you are wondering, you know, what does everything look like in terms of classes and housing and all the immigration rules and ICE and everything that's been coming out, we did host a webinar yesterday. It was a lot of information. So we are working on a uh, frequently asked questions and answers sheet but the webinar itself is available on the ISSS website under special announcements. Um, as we wrap up, we'll continue to keep the chat open for questions, but if each person, uh, our panelists, Katie, Kelly, and Randy can share just one piece of advice or tip when it comes to just living in Dallas, um, can you share that with us or a good experience you've had? Yeah, I'll go first. Um... One of the best pieces of advice I can give um, to really anyone who's who's coming to Dallas would be to really explore the area. There are so many restaurants, so many different types of cuisines, so much to do in Dallas and around SMU that you really want to take advantage of your time here. Um, I'm from Dallas, so even I am still discovering new things around Dallas. So just make sure you take advantage of that and you will come out with a lot of memories and a lot of new experiences that you'll never forget. Yeah, and at the time, restaurants in Dallas, many are open at 50% capacity. Um, that could change daily, but that's where we're at at present moment. Um, I can go next. So one advice I would give to like incoming students would be, try your best to like meet new people because that's part of the college experience. And I actually found that living on campus allowed me to meet a lot of people, especially in my commons. And I found that some of my best friends at SMU were also living in my commons. So just like try to branch out and don't be afraid to speak to new people. Thanks. Um, one thing that will be really helpful for a lot of you is you may be nervous about coming to um, Dallas through the airport. Uh, you know, just there's a lot of going on, but what about my I-20, all these things. We are going to be launching, uh, our plan is to release this via email and social media, hopefully by tomorrow, if not early next week. 
Um, it is a U.S. airport arrival assistance program that we're hosting. And so this means that there will be someone, they're affiliated with a company with the DFW airport that will actually greet you and welcome you upon the time, the moment you get off that plane. Um, and they will take you through customs, they'll help you with your luggage, um, they'll make sure you have someone with you. If you have family coming with you, they can also provide the same service. Um, that is $15 because the ISSS office will cover half of the cost of that for you. And if you want um, pre-arranged transportation that will monitor your flight and get you to campus, um, that is optional through that same service. That cost is completely on your own. Otherwise, you're welcome to do any rideshare service or arrange a pickup on your own. But the package is a meet and greet is what they call it um, and transportation, but you can opt to just do the meet and greet if you want a cost effective option, which would just be $15. And so that will be a new service provided to just help you get through the airport um, just a, a lot more comfortably, especially given the, the, the time that we're living in. All right, so make sure you follow our social media below. We share a lot of information on there. Our next webinar will be about just overcoming the top five mistakes international students can make. Don't fall trap. We want you to succeed. Um, and then we are here for you. Um, I'm getting emails constantly from you all, so I'm trying to keep up, but, um, but, but I am here for you as so, so is Kelly and, and Randy um, and, and Katie, who's been one of our international student leaders from our leadership program. If you have any other questions, the chat will remain open. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us.